Welcome to Karis Daily Live Bible Study. Join believers from around the globe to study the Bible with Andrew Womack and instructors from Karis Bible College. Welcome everyone to Tuesday Night Live Bible Study. My name is Carrie Pickett and I'm going to be the host this evening. And I'm excited that you are joining us. I know many of you are already family of Tuesday Night Bible Study, so welcome back. I believe God's got something really great for you. For those of you that are new, we always do a little bit of announcements, just how we do this so that you can be part of the family and join in. This is Live Bible Study, which means you get to interact with us. And this is one of the things we love. Uh, everyone that connects with us loves this portion of live Bible study. So whatever forum that you are watching on right now, if you go down to the chat section, uh, we want to hear your questions. And so at the end of tonight's message, we're going to take a time for question and answers. We take about 15 minutes. So write in your questions and then we try to get to as many as possible. Whichever ones we do not get to, what we always do is throughout the week, we gather up all the questions not just of Tuesday Night Live Bible Study, but Monday through Friday. So Karis Live Daily Bible Studies, it's daily, isn't that awesome? Uh, not just weekly, so we have daily Bible studies, Mondays and Fridays, we start at 10 o'clock in the morning, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 6 p.m., and then Wednesdays, 7 o'clock in the morning. So this is a great way to just daily get the word in, just in this nice bite-sized piece, plus you get to have live interaction and ask questions. So uh, we take questions throughout the week, we call it our Roundup, Q&A, where we round up all the different uh, questions that we might not have gotten to. And then every Tuesday afternoon, one of our amazing teachers, either Greg Moore, Barry Bennett, uh, Rick McFarland, they will take those questions and spend some time on Facebook answering those live again. So go to Andrew Womack Ministries Facebook page, hit like, and that way you can get more of your question answered. What also makes this a tremendous time of interaction is not only do you get to hear the word and get to ask questions and get answers, but this is also where you can reach out to the ministry and get prayer. So our prayer ministers 24 hours a day, seven days a week, we have prayer ministers who love the word, love God, and they want to join with you in prayer and speak the things that God has for your life. So call them if you're going through anything, uh, this is a time to reach out. Uh, they would love to minister to you. When you do reach out to them as well, one of the things besides prayer that they also do is that if you're saying, I need some resources, I'm... I need to know more about healing. I need to know about who I am in the Lord. Any topic that you need, they'll be able to direct you to material of Andrew, as well as some of our other teachers and guest ministers here at Karis Bible College. So it's a tremendous resource that you can reach out, ask them about. So every Tuesday night, and especially on Tuesdays, not any other uh, of our live Bible studies do we do this, but we actually do a drawing every Tuesday night for those of you that sign up for the Bible study notes. So if you've never signed up for those, go to awmi.net slash Bible study, register. And what we do is we will send you the notes of every Tuesday night's message. So when we have a guest minister or Andrew that is ministering, they'll send you those notes weekly so that you can continue to go through those scriptures. This is just a great way for you to go even deeper into the Word of God because I believe you're watching tonight because you're hungry. <clears throat> every night that we do that, excuse me, every Tuesday night that we do that, we always have the free giveaway. And this week we have Harnessing Your Emotions. This is an excellent book. Uh, I think there are many, many people who need this. Harnessing Your Emotions and Self-Centeredness, The Source of All Grief. I think we all need those books regularly. So this is a great book. I, uh, I read this decades ago and I still refer back to it. So so that's going to be our free giveaway. So register. Last week, uh, we had Andrew's book, How to Become a Water Walker, that we um, shared with you guys. And somebody won that. Uh, Jules Bahati, you won that. So Jules, we're going to get that out to you. <clears throat> So uh, lastly, we always have some amazing things happening here at the ministry, Andrew Mike Ministries and Karis Bible College. And so we would like to invite you uh, to this. Our Healing is Here conference is August 9th through the 11th. Guys, I'm telling you, this Healing is Here conference is anointed. It's powerful. Getting into the Word, getting to the presence of God. There is so much healing truly that happens at this conference because the Word is building up people's hearts. So even our very first night, of the conference last year, we had a thousand people stand and receive healing. 
that stood and said, we received our healing during tonight's service. And so guys, I'm just telling you, this is a great opportunity for you to come. If there's someone in your life that needs to be encouraged by the word of God, you need to bring them here to Colorado. If for some reason that you cannot get out of the house, the person that is ill cannot travel, then we are live streaming the Healing Is Here conference. It's going to be powerful. So to know more information to register to come or also to be able to get the live stream information, you're going to want to go to awmi.net slash events and we'll be able to invite you and give you more information. Next, our Truth and Liberty Coalition conference is in September the 9th and the 10th. Guys, we have a lineup that is stellar, world class, and this is where we're talking about truth, liberty, politics, God, how does it all come together and how do we serve the Lord in this arena? So guys, you're not going to want to miss that. So again, for more information, go to awmi.net slash events. So I have the tremendous privilege after giving those announcements and thank you guys for your patience with that, uh, especially for those who are new. Da -da! I have um, Mike Pickett tonight as our uh, guest of honor minister. Andrew is uh, ministering to a group of our powerful ministers that have come into Colorado. So we're excited that they are getting some personal ministry from Andrew tonight. And Amen. we get to minister to you uh, a little bit of back and forth. But uh, Mike Pickett, he is the vice president here of Karis Bible College and Andrew Womack Ministries International Operations. He loves the Lord. He's a great teacher. Teacher, and I'm excited about what the Lord's put on your heart tonight. And so, all right, let's thank jump you. into this. Thank you very much. Well, thank you everyone for letting us come in and minister to you. When Carrie started talking about this book, I thought for sure she was going to hand it over to me. <laughs> uh, but praise the Lord, she just set it down. Hallelujah. He knows it. I don't have to say it. <laughs> <laughs> learning every single day. But uh, again, thank you so much for allowing us to speak into your lives um, this evening or, or wherever you might be in the world, uh, whatever time it might be as well. The, you, know, you know, the Word of God is so amazing. It's absolutely powerful and will transform your life. And so what we want to talk about tonight um, is the aspect of taking hold of your calling, because I'll just say this, the Lord has a calling for your life. The Lord has a purpose and a plan for you. And sometimes the enemy is going to lie to us. He's going to say, no, how in the world could the Lord ever, ever use you? You've done too many things wrong. You're not good enough. You're too tall. You're too short. You're too skinny. You're too fat. You're too black. You're too white. Whatever those things might be, he'll always try to get your eyes focused away from the Lord and his word to try to distract you from his, from the calling that God has in your life. And the reality is God does have a plan for your life. And I don't care what the enemy has done to you in the past. I don't care what the mistakes you've made before in the past. God's calling, God's grace, God's mercy, God's purpose is greater than any mistake you could ever make. Amen. And so I really want to encourage you not to give up. God has an amazing plan for your life. And if you'll just focus on his word, you will see tremendous results. I don't care if you're sitting in a prison cell or if you're sitting in your bedroom, it doesn't make a difference. God has a plan for your life. And we can see that in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. I know that's a scripture that most of us already know, but it says this. And this is, uh, this is the Lord speaking to each and every single one of us. For I know the thoughts that I have, to, to, I think, toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. And what's amazing about that is that expected end is exactly what the Lord has planned for you. That expected end is glorious. It's amazing. It's life transforming, not only for you, but for so many other people that the Lord has already brought around in the circles of your life. Amen. It's why it's so important that you do discover what is your true identity. You, you do discover what the Lord has already done and placed on the inside of your heart. Because it, while, it, while you're walking through that process, God has so many people he wants to bring across your path. Some people he wants you to come across their paths as well to speak words of life into their hearts. Not just things that, will, that may appease them, but things that will absolutely transform their lives because the Lord wants to speak through you by his spirit. That's so powerful. But I'll just say this. <clears throat> um, it's important that we understand that we don't float uphill. It, we, it, and when, I, when, I mean, when I say that, what I mean is that sometimes taking hold of things means we actually have to put some effort into those things. And we're going to talk about exactly what that means during our time. Carrie and I are going to share on these things together. 
what it actually means to take hold of those things. But we, I just want to start off by saying that you do have a call of God in your life. Amen. In Psalms chapter 139, it's beautiful what the psalmist writes in this, in this chapter. He talks about how the Lord knew all of our days before we ever lived one, how he fashioned us and he formed us in our mother's womb. And he was very specific about the way that he created us. Not only did he create us a certain way, he placed us in time, on this world, in the locations that we're in right now, because God has a plan for our lives. And that's powerful. The God of the universe, the God who made the sun, the earth, the, the stars, the moon, everything that's that, that we see in creation has a plan individually for you and for I. That's so amazing. You know, the, in Psalms 139, the, the word actually says, if I were to count the thoughts that you think towards me, that they would outnumber the sands of the sea. That's a powerful thought. And in those sands, in those grains of sands that the, that, that the Lord thinks towards us is a purpose and a plan and a destination for our lives. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's why we're so excited to, be, to have this opportunity to share about what that purpose and that plan actually means. You know, when I, when I think about plans and purposes, because this is what <clears throat> uh, we've experienced and I get tons of these questions, whether it's at Bible school here at Karis or when we're internationally traveling and ministering, you know, people are coming up and saying, well, I don't know the call of God from my life. How do I find God's call for my life? And one thing that I'm always sharing is that, you know, let's, let's talk about calling first. Let's define what it is. Most of the people think that a calling or a purpose is some type of job description that the Lord gets them. You know, like I'm going to be a pastor. I'm going to be a missionary. I'm going to be a mom. I'm going to, and then they look at it as like this, this positional thing that they do for the Lord, almost like God, tell me what my career is. And I'll tell you right now, calling is so much bigger than what you do for the Lord. Calling is not just like, well, I'm a teacher, I'm a preacher, you know, I'm a pastor or whatever. Calling is about your relationship with God. Amen. You know, because throughout the word, and you guys have heard me uh, say this before here on Live Bible Study, that throughout the word of God, he says that he called us to what? To know him. He chose us to be in the beloved. He's called us to relationship with first because it, that is your number one calling. It's not to do all these religious works for God. Your calling is to draw near to God and let God be a part of everything you do. See, sometimes what we try to do is like, this is my life, this is my marriage, this is my health, this is my finances, this is my sexuality. That's what I own. And then over here, God, you give me a calling and it's like my nine to five. No, guys, your calling is your relationship with God that is so big that that absolutely so consumes you, that overflows out of you, right? That your marriage, your family, your sexuality, your home, everything, right? Your talents and your profession, all of these, what the world may say is just your worldly life. No, actually now that becomes your ministry. That becomes your pulpit. That becomes your testimony. That's where you shine your light. If you can do that, if you can be faithful with little, right? Then yes, then God uses that to overflow then how you touch, you heal, you minister, you lead, you do business, all those kind of things that then come out of a relationship with God. You know, it talks about putting the word of God, you know, for out of it, you know, in your heart will spring what? The issues of life. So it's in taking care of our heart and our personal relationship with God that we find calling. Amen. And I think this is so important, you know, because we can read, God's got a purpose for my life, but if we've given the wrong definition to purpose and calling and just think that it's doing, being a worker bee yeah. for God, then guys, it's going to be frustrating because it's, you'll only be able to do it so long in your own strength and your own power, what you feel God has called you to versus if you have relationship with him and you know that's your calling, that's your purpose, knowing that there's going to be an overflow to touch then other people. Other people go, wow, you have such a great ministry. You have such a great calling. Actually, you're seeing my overflow. Actually, my real ministry, my real calling is my relationship with God. That should encourage you today. 
that should so set you free today because you could realize, okay, if that's what it is, well, then I can, I have a call of God on my life. I have purpose on my life. And so I'm going to increase and grow in my relationship with God. And then God, you're in charge of the rest. Amen. That's really good. And sometimes we make things so complicated, don't yeah. we? Mm -hmm. We think uh, that we have to do all these things and accomplish all the th these things yeah. when the reality is all we, all the Lord's asking us to do is truly just to surrender, to lay down our lives, mm -hmm. to say, Lord, it's not about me. It's not my will, but your will that, that be done. You know, you, if you look in Philippians um, chapter, uh, chapter three, um, Paul says this in verse number 12. He says, not as though I had already attained, mm -hmm. either were already perfect, but I follow after, after if, if that I may apprehend that for which I was apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself as having apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching for those things uh, which are before. I press toward the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Can I say Lord. something? Out of my version, out of the English Standard Version, he read out of King James. It says, but I press on to make it my own. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of the language that, you know, I, I'm pressing to, I press on towards the goal. Or uh, later on says uh, here in verse 13, I says, straining forward to what lies ahead. It gives this idea of like, drive yeah. well, versus just like, oh, well, you know, God's got a well, call in my life. What I like about verse 12, it says, not as though I, I have attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after if that I may apprehend that for which I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. And sometimes we think just because you get apprehended, therefore you're going to apprehend as well. When the reality is it ta it's, it's more than that. The, everybody has a calling of God in their lives, but not everybody fulfills it. Yep, that's and, that, and that's the sad part of it, about it, because if we all fulfilled it, we wouldn't have any issue. We wouldn't have the problems that we have right now. We wouldn't have the issues that we have right now in the world. We'd all be pursuing after the Lord. That's why it's important for you and I, brothers and sisters, that now that we know that we've been apprehended, there's a reason for our apprehension. What are we going to pursue onto? Because later on in in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, um, verses 6 and 7, Paul, you remember Paul talking, writing to Timothy, he says, I have, I have run my race. I have finished my, my journey. I, he, he has, uh, I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. He has come to a place where he has not apprehended to now to a place where he has apprehended and he has completed his journey. Mm, that's good. That's a powerful place to be. But how did he get there? And if you look at his, you look at his road, you, I mean, look at, first of all, when Paul first came across on the road to uh, the Lord on the road to, to Damascus, um, he was persecuting the, the Jew, the, the Christians. He was working for the Jews. He was going and he was, he was bringing torment to the, to the new, new church of Jesus. And, and as soon as he had his road to, to Damascus experience, um, he heard a voice and Paul surrendered to that voice. He said, he said, okay, Lord, he said, who are you, Lord? And the Lord revealed himself to him and the Lord began to lead him from that point on. And later on in Galatians chapter one, we read about how Paul says immediately how he did not confer with flesh and blood, but he separated himself unto the Lord and be, he began to hear and to seek after the Lord and say, Lord, what do you have? What is your plan for my life? There was a point of surrender. It was no longer about him just hearing the call because he heard the call on yeah. the road to Damascus. Yeah. He was blind. I mean, he had a powerful experience he where he was blinded mm -hmm. by this powerful light and he heard a voice and, um, but he responded to it. He said, okay, now Lord, what do you, what would you have me do? What is my next steps? Mm -hmm. And then from there, he separated himself to discover what those next steps were. Oftentimes we, we come to a place where it's like, okay, I have a calling. So therefore I'm going to go out and just do this and do that. And we're going to ask everybody else, what do they think? And the Lord's saying, Hey, listen, don't ask anybody else. Come to me. I will confirm those things through other people, but discover your purpose and your calling through me, through surrender, through relationship with me. And I think that's, you know, Mike and I were talking about this a little bit before. And when you think of pressing on to lay hold of, it seems opposite, but the way you press in, the way you drive, the way you grab a hold and become who God made you to be, what God destined you to be, what is, is stirring up inside of you, and sometimes you don't even know how to define it, the way you actually step into that is you take your hands off of it. You just totally surrender, and you already already said that, but it's just coming to a place of my life is not my own. I've been crucified with Christ. It's Christ that lives within me. It's not I who lives, 
but it's him who loved me and gave himself for me. So the life that I'm now living, I'm living by the faith of the Son of God, Galatians 2.20. This is powerful because when you realize, hey, it's not my life, then all of a sudden the life that you now live, you live by the faith of the Son of God. Now it's about him. It's That's not right. about your plan, your agenda, your timing, your family, your wish list for God, right? It stops being about that. And it's like, Lord, my life is about you. And so if it's about you, then Lord, have your way. That's actually how you press on to hold and grab a hold of those things. Because now you surrender to the Lord in a way that he can say when, where, who, how, why. And you're going to be obedient because your life is not your own. That's how you press in to take hold of it is like this place of surrender and relationship. So then as he speaks to you, your response is trust and obedience. You know, we're all of us growing in faith. We're all of us growing in the Lord. But all we, of us. All of us. <laughs> Some of us more than others. <laughs> I'll just say this. You know, when you first came to the Lord, it wasn't because God started pursuing you at that moment. God had, had already been pursuing you your entire life. He'd already been laying foundational principles in your heart, speaking to you consistently, but it took a response from you and I to take hold of those things that God had for us. It took us pursuing after and being having an appetite for him to say, yes, Lord, I receive you into my heart. We've been given grace for grace. We've been given the ability to respond to the Lord. And I believe that's the grace that all of us have. Every single person that's ever lived and ever will live has the grace to respond to the Lord. That's, yeah. that's the right that he's given. That's the, that's the opportunity that we have been given. Then you look at um, when, you, when we receive the, the Holy Spirit into our hearts as well. God didn't force us to speak in tongues. God didn't force the Holy Spirit upon us. He said, this is your choice. We read about it in the book of Acts. We read about a, an experience that the, uh, that the disciples had in the upper room. But and the disciples could have chosen to, to, to stay and to linger and wait uh, and, and to honor the word of the Lord. Or they could have chosen just to go out and start telling people about Jesus. But they decided they wanted to be walk in obedience. And because of that, they began speaking in tongues. Now, whenever you and I have uh, received the Holy Spirit into our hearts as well, God's not going to force us and say, hey, you need to speak in tongues right now. I'm going to move your mouth to do it. No, we re-respond. Yeah. We open up our mouths and we see the power of God coming through a heavenly language. It's the same thing with our calling. Now we have the opportunity yeah. to respond to the will of God in our lives. We have That's the right. opportunity to lay down our lives and say, Lord, I'm going to pursue after you. I'm going to shut the television off. I'm going to shut off distractions. I'm going to stop believing in the circumstances. And I'm going to start pursuing after you in taking hold and apprehending that for which I am apprehended. Yeah. That's a powerful, powerful authority and ability that you and I have been given. So when we take a step back and we say, Lord, I'm not going to listen to the voices that are around me. I'm not going to listen to the naysayers. And I'm not even going to, I'm not going to listen to my own voice sometimes when the enemy tries to speak through the, a voice that sounds like me saying that I'm to this or I'm to that or I'm not enough or that I've done too many things wrong. Who cares what those things have to say? I'm going to go back to the word of God. I'm going to surrender myself to what the word declares over my life. And I'm going to say, yes, Lord. This is what you have died to appropriate for me. So therefore, this is what I'm going to die to myself to appropriate and to begin to walk in. That's, a, that's an amazing that's principle that God has given us that we mm -hmm. can take hold of those great and precious promises that, that, that are defined in the word of God that, that's, that Peter talks about mm -hmm. in 2 Peter chapter 1. And we can take hold of every single one of those great and precious promises that by these, we might become partakers of his divine nature. Yeah. And that partaker means you took part. You're a part taker. You mm -hmm. took part mm -hmm. of his divine nature. You didn't right. just say God is holy. God is righteous. God is this. God is that. He is all those things. You're absolutely right in saying those things, but it's not enough that I just see him as that. Now I get to experience him, him as that because I get to be a partaker of that divine yeah. nature. That's great. And I think this is what's so powerful is like when you know when you know who God is yeah. and you know who he is within you, then all of a sudden your vision of what God could do through you is so much bigger. 
This is why in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, it talks about that he wants to do exceedingly above, abundantly, immeasurably, some versions say, above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Amen. And that's ultimately what this is about. Your calling is not about just your enthusiasm, your drive, your desire. It's about a power that is at work within you. See, because when you and I got born again, the spirit of the living God, the fullness of the Godhead bodily, the fullness of the kingdom of God came to live inside of you. That's why when God looks at you, he says, oh, you haven't even begun to dream. I know you think you have vision. Oh, let me tell you, I can do abundantly, immeasurably beyond what you could ask or imagine. Why? Because when God looks at you, he doesn't see you. He sees himself. When God looks at you, he sees Jesus. He sees the finished work of the Redeemer, Provider, the resurrected Lord and Savior living inside of you. And he looks at you and says, oh my goodness, what they are able to do. Amen. That's why he could say, you are more than a conqueror. With God, all things are possible. That's why he can say, greater works shall you do then Jesus, what? Why? Why? Because Jesus lives inside of us. This is why when we talk about the depth of our calling, guys, it's not some little squeaky, little tiny calling. It has impact. Even if you touch one person, it's a powerful impact because of who they touch and who they touch and who they touch. Amen. Don't, don't believe the lies of the enemy that says <coughs> that God can't use you. God's not using you. God's using a surrendered you that Amen. is filled with himself. Amen. That's, That's a whole other story. That's good. You know, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, it says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath, pre uh, hath uh, before ordained that we should walk in them. <coughs> That's an amazing statement that, that, we, that, that the word declares over us, that we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. And we have been created so that we could walk in them. That's, that's, that's the work of the Holy Spirit. That's the work of the Lord right there. I'll tell you something. If you could do work, good works on your own, you wouldn't need God. <laughs> but the reality is, is that there's none of us that can do anything good outside of God. Mm -hmm. And so... The fact that we were created to be as his workmanship. You look back in Genesis chapter one and how God created you and I, uh, well, how God created everything. God created the heavens, he created the earth, he created the sun, the moon, the stars. He created all the, 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 the animals in the earth. He created the land, he created the sea. He created all these different things, but he only created one being in his image. And that's you and I, because we are created to carry his spirit. Man, that's good. And as you and I surrender to his will on the inside of us, uh, again, I know, I know that we say this consistently here, but it's powerful to understand that the same spirit that was inside of Jesus, that the spirit of God lives on the inside of you and you and I. And the, the word says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17, that he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit. Yeah. So that we are one with the Lord. And when we surrender our will and say, Lord, not my will, but, but your will be done, his, work, his, his craftsmanship, his workmanship, uh, and, and we begin to walk out those good works that he has created before the foundation of the world, before the foundation of time. He saw you and I, and he created us to be vessels that carry his very being, his very presence. Amen. If you look through the entire old covenant, this still fascinates, it just amazes me. The old covenant, when as soon as man died, and sorry, as soon as man died, as soon as man sinned, and and we and we were separated from the Lord, God consistently created ways to walk with His people. You see the tabernacle of Moses, and you see the, the pillar of the covenant. Yeah, the ark of the covenant that was created. You see the pillar of fire that led them by night, and the pillar of smoke that led the the children of Israel by day. You see the temple that that David prepared and that Solomon built and you see the presence of God dwelling with his people. Well, then that was all in preparation for a time when God could indwell his people mm. and now live on the inside of us. But I'll tell you, it's so important for you and I to understand that, yes, we have been apprehended. Yes, we have been taken hold of. Yes, we have been set free from the power of sin. 
And now you and I have the ability, the privilege to pursue after God mm -hmm. and apprehend everything by, for which we've been apprehended. That's the power that you have been given. Amen. And I'll tell you something, the Bible makes it very clear that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. That even though we may have difficult times in this world, we can rejoice because Jesus has already overcome this world. There's a lot of things that the enemy will try to throw at us. A lot of impediments, a lot of things that we will Mm -hmm. even bring up in our own lives. I'm notorious for this, mm -hmm. but this is why I can't do it. Well, the reality is, is that God removed the, those whys yeah. mm -hmm. and he empowered us to be everything that he called us to be if we'll simply trust in him and take hold of those things. Because when it's so easy to have excuses, God says, in place of excuses, I've given you promises. Amen. That's good. And these promises are bigger than any excuse. That's why in Second uh, Peter, when it talks about, you know, how many great and pro precious promises he has given us, I want to turn there real quick, just to, to be able to do it right. Second Peter chapter one, and it says this, his divine power has granted us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us, again, called us to his own glory and excellence. He didn't say he called us to become a worker. He said he called us to his glory. Amen. He called us to himself, right? By which he granted to us his, pro his precious and very great promises so that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature says that a divine nature having escaped from the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desire. He says, listen, I have a way of escape from this limited sinful desire, small definition, small thinking world. Yeah. I've given you great and precious promises so that through these, you can get out of your excuses and start to have this participation of relationship with the nature of God, not just the nature of God way up there, the nature of God that's in here. So that what? You have everything that you need for life and godliness. Amen. So powerful. We have some questions that are really, really good. I just want to say one last thing. And again, <laughs> and again, I just feel like this is for somebody that you have a calling on your life. Amen. You have a plan. God has a purpose for you. You are not a failure. You're not a mistake. Mm, God loves good. you so much. And he, and he has prepared long before you ever lived, every single, uh, every single pathway set before you so that you can walk in, the, in it and walk successfully in it because God wants to make you a living, breathing trophy of his glory. Amen. As we begin to walk those things out, God gets the glory. God doesn't get glory when we, when we, when we live defeated lives. Mm -mm. He doesn't get glory when we walk around depressed, depressed or impoverished. God gets, gets glory when we overcome circumstances by his blood, mm -hmm. by his name by his actions and we boast upon him and the glory that gets revealed in us is the glory that points people right back to the Lord. Amen. So I wanna encourage you, take That's hold good. of every great and precious promises. Do not let the, the enemy lie to you. Do not let yourself lie to you. Do not let voices outside of you lie to you. God has great and mighty things in store for you. Amen, well, that, was a, that was a good last word. So I wanna jump into these um, uh, script, uh, questions. Okay. So there's a lot, so we'll Okay. Um, In other words, make it fast. Okay. <laughs> Curtis on YouTube says, I've been struggling uh, in this area as I need to find a vocation or can I spread... Okay. I've been struggling in this area. I need to find a vocation or I can spread the gospel, speak to life and love in the people and support my family. So just how does he do this? Does he find a vocation? Or does he just focus on, on ministering to his family? Uh, this is how I understood the question, like, what does he do? Well, I don't think there's an either or there. I think that you can, you can be a living testimony no matter what you do. So if you're looking for a job in the secular world or in, or, or in ministry, just, just follow the peace of God in your, in, in your heart. Don't make things too complicated. Sometimes we make things so difficult for us. Yeah. And the reality is, is go back to the word and follow the peace and be, be, be uh, living clay that God can mold as you walk along the path. Yeah. And as you do that more and more, God's going to lead you. He is, I'll tell you the grace of God, what, what I love about the grace of God, and I'll say this real quick. I love about the grace of God is the fact it's not about us, our ability to hear his voice. It's about his ability to, to make his voice heard. And all we have to do is, is plug our noses into this book and allow him to speak to our hearts. We're going to discover his pathway for yeah. us. Yeah, I, I, you will minister to your family, speak life, love on them, support your family, and you can have a vocation. Yeah. I mean, Mike and I are doing full-time plus ministry, and we have kids, and we, we have extended family, and 
and and you just learn to know how to do and steward the seasons and the things that God has called you to. Amen. Amen. All right. So Emily on chat says this. I have asked many times that I do his will and do what he has planned for me, but have heard nothing. No open doors. I took that to mean his will is just to live with others and be like Christ. Should I keep seeking for a more specific plan? You know, sometimes we seek the Lord because we want to get something from him. And I, I really would like to challenge you, Emily. I like, really like to challenge you, Emily, seek the Lord for him. You know, j just get to know him, get, get to experience him, really, really get to see, see what he's like. Uh, find out his per his personality, his sense of humor, all those different things. Mm -hmm. And as you get to know him more and more, you can get to know him through his word. You can get to know him through prayer that will be confirmed in in his word. As you get to know him more and more, the Lord will give you direction. He'll give you peace. He'll give you areas and opportunities and open doors to walk yeah. through. Sometimes we forget what we we're created for, and that's just for fellowship with the Lord. Yeah. Everything else is just a fruit. It's just an overflow. So God will open up those doors and those opportunities and he'll give you the peace to walk through those doors as they open. And I feel like our overflow actually starts to be in a lot of areas. I agree. You know, because again, people are going to ask you about your testimony. Why is your marriage good? Or like, why are your kids obedient? Like, how did you, how did you not get sick? Like, how did you have that healing? It's actually the living fountain of our own relationship with God that actually brings the specific questions yeah. and the specific opportunities Amen. because people see the fruit in your life. So produce the fruit and it will plant seeds for more opportunities. Amen. That's good. So, um, uh, Samaya says this on YouTube. She asks this, if someone has lost passion and drive for their calling, can it mean that that particular calling is completed or that can they find the zeal again and continue the calling? Can I answer this one? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 I believe it's, it's both and. Yes, sometimes yes. people do lose their calling and they, they just, they get distracted. It says that the cares of the world come and choke out the word. So it's not just the word, it's also your purpose, your drive. You get distracted with all those things. Mm -hmm. So yes, a person can lose their passion because they're feeding themselves with different things. So if you want that passion of your calling, that zeal, then you need to be in the word that what stirs up those things inside of you. If you've lost your passion, then I'm going to probably uh, encourage you that there's some other things you've been feeding yourself. And so your appetite for those things, you've basically lost your appetite for the things of God. So you have to get back into the word. On the other hand, there are seasons that you'll be doing something and it does feel like the grace is not there. It just feels like, I just, I just don't have that same like drive anymore, Lord. And you can always ask the Lord, Lord, is this, am I getting distracted by something or is a new season happening? And Mike and I were actually talking about this today at lunch. There's, there's, there's seasons where something kind of, we like, for example, we were missionaries on the field, 16 plus years, 16. And uh, between, between both of us doing different things and meeting and then being married on the field. And then it was like, God said, okay, now it's, now it's time to do something different. And it's not that we lost our passion for, you know, wanting to spread the gospel, but now it was redirected in a different way. And so there was different momentum and, and, and vision for this new season versus staying in the old season. So again, I think it's both and. And so what you need to do is go back to the Holy Spirit and say, Lord, if I don't feel any passion or zeal or drive, is it because I'm entering a new season and you're wanting me to truly seek you to find that? Or have I got distracted by the things of the world? Amen. Amen. Okay. Next question. Um, Sharon says on YouTube, so our calling is to first have a relationship with God, then let him show us what to do next. It sounds too, too, too good to be true, doesn't it? <laughs> but it's the truth. But it's the truth. You know, the, the, the Lord, the word says in Psalms that he will give us the desires of yeah. our heart. And sometimes we think that that means that whatever we desire, God's going to give us. And the reality is that God's all about giving us those desires themselves. Uh, but, but it first starts off by saying, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. And so as we delight ourselves in the Lord and as we seek after him, I'll tell you, the Bible says that at, at, um, at his right hands are, are treasures for our pleasures forevermore. Uh, and in his presence mm -hmm. is the fullness of joy. 
And so uh, un I think it's important that each and every single one of us come to understand what that means, that as we seek after the Lord and discover Him, truly that, that becomes the fulfillment of all of our desires. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then God will give us passion to minister. God will give us passion to, to, to raise a family, to be a CEO or to be a, a janitor or to drive a truck or whatever those things might be. It doesn't make a difference. It'll be an overflow out of our relationship with God. Christianity is not a, is, is not a, it's not a one-time prayer. It's a mindset. It's a lifestyle. It's a, it's a heart being transformed. And we can do that every single day in whatever sphere that God has called us to actually live and to minister in. That's good. That's really good. So Kaylin on YouTube asks this, as we pursue a specific calling from God, how do we find a balance between resting in God's words to us and doing things diligently? Would you like to answer that? I would love to answer that, actually. Okay, so Kaylin, you know, and, and for anyone that has this, you know, how do you find the balance between resting in God's Word and doing things diligently? Actually, um, this last Monday, I had a very similar question. How do, how do you be diligent and then rest in the Lord, mm -hmm. right? And so it's, it's, it's not either or. It's, again, both and. So this is what happens is you grow in the things of the Lord. The Lord actually it's in resting in him it's in coming to him and just saying lord my life belongs to you that he shows you what to set your hand to and then we do apply diligence and we do apply discipline we do apply excellence we do apply the wisdom of god and the mercies of god now we take all the things that we talked about that's in our spirit and that's what we move forward in and apply that and that's how you do it diligently right and so but then as you're doing the things that the lord has showed you to do you're careful that you don't be like hey got a calling got it from here god call you when i need money <laughs> It's got to be like you, you do the things diligently. I mean, Mike and I are always finding the balance of this, even, you know, ministering and, and serving Andrew and Jamie in the ministry and Karis Bible Colleges. We want to do it diligently. Yeah. But if we get so focused on just the doing and the excellence and the strategy and more and, and deeper and farther, and if we get so focused on that, that we forsake our own relationship with the Lord <laughs> and don't rest in Him for that wisdom, that quickening of his spirit, the him quickening even our mortal bodies. If we're not resting in him, <coughs> you don't have the energy to do things with diligence, not a godly diligence anyway. You can be a hard worker and do it all in your own strength. So it's, it's taking the rest from the Lord and then from that rest, it brings the diligence. And that's not just a one-time thing. Amen. It's throughout the day and throughout your relationship. I'll just say this as well really quickly. If you read in Hebrews chapter four, um, all of Hebrews uh, 3, 2 and 3 actually talk about the progression and the unbelief that the children of Israel had when they're coming out of Egypt yeah. and how they, um, how they had an evil heart of unbelief amongst them. And then Hebrews chapter 4 talks about, let us therefore labor, lest the promise of entering into his rest, we should fall short thereof. And that laboring, it really is, truly is just getting to know him and trust him and believing in him and his word. That's good. It goes on down in verse number 12 to say, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the spirit, of the soul and the spirit, the joints and the marrow, and that is the, the, the discerner of the thoughts and intents of our heart. You know, so it's talking about rest, but then it talks about the word. That tells me right there that there's a marrying of pursuing after God in the word and entering into his rest. Yeah, that's good. We enter into his rest when we pursue after him and we surrender everything in our lives to the Lord and say, Lord, it's not my will, but your will be done. I am, I am pursuing after you and I am surrendered to you and I will seek you diligently and you will open the doors. And it's not just a matter of walking around with your face buried, buried in the word all the time. It's walking around in communion with the Lord, doing what you put your hands to do and watching him prosper those things, whether it's in a secular realm or in the, in the ministry realm. That's good. Okay, so um, Josh on YouTube asked this. It says, I've been struggling for years to find my career. Do I have to have a revelation from God to move forward a cer to a certain career or do we have grace to choose a career based on passion? Well, that's a now, let me, question. I'm going to add something to this because I want to do this two part. Josh, you asked that. So can we just choose something based on passion, right? 
uh, or do we need to have a, a very clear direction from God? But then Lindsay also asked this on YouTube, so it's two-parter. I have had what I thought were callings, but they ended up failing or not working out. So I find it hard to trust my passions. I don't want to fail again. How do I succeed moving forward? So can you use passion as part of direction? Because some people move out in passion and it ends up failing. Mm. Well, it goes back to what we had said earlier. You know, the, the word says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. And so if you're taking your delight in the Lord and you're saying, Lord, I, I love you and I'm passionate about you and this is what I feel like you're leading me towards, well then, well then go with that. I think sometimes we make things so complicated again and we think that we have to have a word uh, written out in fire in the sky saying mm -hmm. God's, God's called me to be this or be that. Yeah. The reality is, it's God saying, I've placed, placed this desire in your heart to be a mom, to be a dad, to be, to be a homemaker, to be a, uh, an executive, to be, to be whatever, or, or a basketball player, whatever those things might be. And the reality is, is God saying, delight yourself in me, and I'm going to open up those doors. Again, this sounds so simple, doesn't it? It sounds so easy, but God made things very simple for us. Sometimes we just complicate things. Yeah. Um, we've ran out of time, but I will say this, um, Gail, you'd asked the, uh, the aspect of, should we seek just opportunity for good works or listen for the leading of the spirit or both? <laughs> and I, I think that this, this is, we, we had an argument about this when we first got married as far as what our attitude should be. Yeah. Yes and no. Yeah. Oh yeah. Goodness. When we. Mike was like, well, we go when God says. And it's, I was it's like, a no until God says it's yes. a no until God says yes. And I was like, no, that's not how it works at all. God's word says, because we were talking specifically about missions and nations and tribes and languages and stuff like that, you know, and I was like, hey, let's go everywhere. And so I said, the word is, says go into all the world. And I told Mike, I said, I see it as a, always it's a go. It's always a yes, unless God says a no. And it was really a different mentality and, yeah. you know, I ended up being right. And so, <laughs> I will admit that. and so, but it was just this idea of like, if the word says it, then it's a yes. And so if there's an opportunity to lay your hands on the sick and minister and, and be a light and shine, you do it. You don't wait for a certain direction. Right. You don't wait for the Holy Spirit to say, go and talk to that person. You can see an opportunity for good works. And again, the overflow out of your heart. Now, if the Lord says, wait, don't preach to that person yet. I'm still working on their hearts. Then that's when you obey. And so that's why, again, your relationship with God is the source of right. all your overflow. That's right. You know where to go, who to talk to, Amen. what to say when you get there. And then ultimately your everyday example of a life being your calling and your purpose that you get to make a difference in this world. I'll just say this, you know, the, one of the reasons why um, the Lord wants you to walk in your purpose is because that's where you're going to be the most satisfied. You're going to be most satisfied in your relationship with God as you discover what, it, what you were made for and you begin to walk it out. And God wants you happy. He wants you to enjoy every single day. I'm not saying he, every day is going to be easy. I'm saying He wants you to, to enjoy every single day and what He's called you to do. And mm -hmm. so as you pursue after your purpose, just understand that God created you for that reason, that God wants you to walk in that purpose even greater than you do. So it's, he's not hiding it from you. Yeah. And oftentimes it comes to a place of surrender saying, Lord, I don't know what's best for me. I know you do. So therefore I surrender to your will. Guys, I believe that tonight this just hopefully encouraged you. If you've been feeling tired, you've been feeling weary, you've been feeling distracted, you feel like, am I making a difference? Do I have a purpose? Yes, because the power and the life of God is inside of Amen. you and you can have relationship with him. Focus on relationship with him. If you don't know how to build that relationship, please reach out to our prayer ministers. Ask them, how do I build relationship with God? How do I, how do I learn these things? If you're not spirit filled, I'm going to encourage you, please call our prayer ministers tonight because there is something about praying in the spirit. You're praying the perfect mysteries and will of God. And then you start to see that interpretation, that overflow in your everyday life. It is powerful. Amen. So, we love you. God bless you. Please, uh, please check us out tomorrow for our live Bible study, Amen. Wednesday morning, bright and early. You guys are going to be blessed. All of our Karis Bible College teachers are, are teaching these live Bible studies, and they are full of so much wisdom, experience. Amen. They're practitioners of the word, and we believe that you're going to be blessed. So praise God. He wants to do immeasurably 
above all that you could ask, think or imagine according to who he is inside of you. Amen. So dream big, don't limit God, and God bless you. Love you guys. I'd like to encourage you to check out our AWM Now stories and also our Inside Story. These are things where we just go behind the scenes and show you things about people in the ministry, about things that the ministry is doing that you'll probably never see on television, and yet it is awesome. God is touching people's lives all around the world. And so you can go to awmi.net and check out the AWM Now stories and also our inside stories. They'd be a blessing to you. Join us every weekday for our daily live stream on Gospel Truth TV. 